With all the parity now in the NBA, it seems like a lot of teams have gone back to the formula that won a lot of teams' championships before, and that is creating a very strong duo in the NBA while placing the rest of the team being crazy great role players. And right now, this past offseason, they've been a couple from Donovan Mitchell to Darius Garland now teaming up, John Tay Murray and Trey Young, <laughs> Rudy and Cat. But one team that already had their duo that a lot of people didn't think would become this good this quickly or even at all is the Memphis Grizzlies. Right now, I think the Memphis Grizzlies probably have the best backcourt in the NBA with John Morant and Desmond Baines. And while you may say that's crazy when you still have players like Stephen Clay in the league, even though Clay kind of sucks right now, or you have DeJounte Murray and Trey Young, or Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. A lot of people may see this and immediately think, how? Because right now, Desmond Bain is playing to a near all NBA level, or to be honest, right at an all NBA level at 25 points per game, five rebounds, five assists, while shooting 47% from the field and 45% from three on nine attempts. And John Morant on the other end is shooting 29 points per game, six rebounds, seven assists, a steal a game on 48% shooting and on five attempts per game shooting 41% from three. One of the main concerns people had in this game when he first came in the league. This team has consistently found ways to improve internally and just get better and better even though they're a small market team that doesn't really attract a ton of free agents but they're showing the league that there are going to be a team to be reckoned with for years to come and we need to sit down and respect the players and this team that we have here because they could definitely take down a lot of players and maybe one day become a very very good championship level team even though they're i think at a contender level right now i just think there's a couple teams that you know maybe a little bit better but right now the Memphis Grizzlies are 9-4 and four, and these two have been putting on an absolute show. So today we're going to talk about not only why they have the best backcourt in the NBA, how the Memphis Grizzlies have been so good this season, and why people need to put some respect on their name because I don't feel them getting a lot of the respect that I see certain other teams getting even though they're playing extremely well. Let's go. Throughout his first three years in the NBA, John Moran has taken quite the leap each year. From his first year, he's shown that he's one of the best guards in this league. To kind of stagnating in that 2020 year since everybody did since everybody only had like two months of rest and immediately came back after the bubble but immediately took that MVP level jump the next year and dragged this Memphis Grizzlies team to a 55 wins I wouldn't say drag he was just the main part of why they were a 55 win team and the second best record in the Western Conference and they took the eventual NBA championship in Golden State to six games and probably could have went to a game seven or maybe they would have been the ones in the NBA Finals if this team just had you know their best player in those last two games but right now this season so far the Memphis Grizzlies are 9-4 and four. John Moran has taken the next leap in his game which is improving that three-point shooting to a whole new level right now the Memphis Grizzlies have been experimenting a little bit while playing Ja at the two guard a little bit this season since his three-point shot has taken such a big jump and him being able to play off ball a little bit more this season has created some insane insane levels of offense for this team right now John Moran has improved his shot that a little bit to the point where he's taking a little bit less shots in the paint not too much but a little bit less and he's put that into a little bit more long mid-range jumpers pull-ups in the mid-range and three-point shots and he's been rewarded with that going from last season shooting 38 percent from 10 to 16 feet to now 47 percent and from 16 to the three-point line he was shooting only 24 percent last season and right now he's shooting 50 percent from that spot while it is a very small sample size it's only been 12 games one thing about ja is that he's shown that he's able to improve his game in some facet as time has gone on since he's been in this league now added on to the now improved three-point jumper to his already amazing finishing ability and contortionist way of just finding the best angle to finish at the rim and high flying jumpers Teams have now not been able to do the same thing they've been doing so far, and that's play off his three-point shot, go under screens, and just try to keep him out of the paint and off the free throw line as much as they can. And with that being said, now that they can't do that anymore, this has opened up the court for a lot of other players on this team, like the next guy I'm about to talk about. Coming to the NBA, Desmond Bain is kind of looked down upon by a lot of NBA scouts because of his short wingspan. Coming to the NBA at the size he was at 6'5", even with all the great shooting and defensive ability he showed in college, a lot of teams like to look past him because they didn't think that would translate to the NBA with such a short wingspan. But he's been showing that that is neither a worry for anyone because just in his second year in the NBA, he improved from 9 points a game to 18 points per game and shot 44% from 3 on 7 attempts. And so far this season, he's improved again to now a 25 point per game score at 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 
on 47% shooting, 45% from three on nine attempts per game. And while a lot of people may think that level of high level shooting may not even be a little bit sustainable, I should tell you that Desmond Baines is probably one of the most highest shot IQ players I've seen in this league. He doesn't force anything. He's not Klay Thompson, is what I'm trying to say. He takes great shots. Um, he takes shots that he, he knows he can make. Off screens, using pump fake sidesteps. He always finds a way to stay in rhythm and get at least a very good or to a decent look at the worst at the rim and fire off a pretty quick jumper. And along with his very large size and frame, that small wingspan doesn't really translate that bad on the defensive end. When you put a very when you put any guard on him or a shifty guard that he has to guard, they can't really force their way through his chest because the man is swole as shit. Um, he's very strong, he can bump them off their line of drive, so they can't really get to the spots that they always want to. And he still has pretty nice hands that he can get his hands in there sometimes and mix it up even though he doesn't have a long wingspan. And if you put guards that aren't shifty on him, he has quick enough feet to cut off any quick driving lanes. So overall, the man is a very, very good defender along with now a widening offensive game. He even improved his shot that a little bit right now this season becoming a little bit more aggressive in transition, getting to the paint, um, taking a little bit more pull-ups this season. Um, overall, really diversifying his offensive game and taking a lot of the pressures off Ja and off Jaren Jackson Jr. when he does come back to this team and opening up the floor for everybody else. With that being said, this, this backcourt is literally putting up some insane numbers that not even Clay and Steph were able to put up in their prime. All right now, they've been taking the season by storm as they're the second highest scoring duo in the league only behind Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And as the season goes on, I don't see this really dropping. Even if John Moran can't sustain the 40% three-point shooting he is right now, he's improved his game throughout his entire career and him being a 37 to 38% three-point shooter is more than enough to take his game to a whole nother level. And in Desmond Bain's case, he's been able to shoot this entire clip the past season before. I don't see why he can't do it this season again. And now in, I think hopefully a month or so when Jaren Jackson Jr. does return this, he returns this defensive anchor to this team. And hopefully he doesn't, you know, go back to the very uh, tunnel vision, shoot the ball every single time it touches my fingertips type of play. Hopefully the fouling problem gets a little bit better. And this team now has a true defensive anchor that plays within this offense and plays off its two offensive stars so far. And this team could be so dangerous going into this NBA playoffs. I don't see a lot of teams being able to give them too many problems. A lot of people expect the Clippers to be great this season, and Kawhi has been MIA to say the least. The Nuggets are still working out the Kings over there, even though they've started off great. The Golden State Warriors suck right now. Um, uh, the Utah Jazz are good, very good. Don't expect them to be um, consistently this good the entire season. Playoff team, yes, but um, top of the league, no. So there isn't a lot of teams that I think can stand in this team's way or has the cohesiveness that this team does have. And they have a very good chance of making it to the top. The NBA Finals now playing against like the Boston Celtics or or, any or the Milwaukee Bucks that come out of the Eastern Conference. I don't know how well they may do then. Probably not well at all. But say, say the least that this Memphis Grizzlies team, a small market team can make it to the Conference Finals or NBA Finals is incredible for this roster. So right now, Desmond Baines, Trey, uh, and John Morant, probably the best backcourt in the NBA right now. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think there's another backcourt better than this one? I really don't think so. But that being said, this is FLB. That's my time. And I'm out.